down for Willis. You see the matchup board for our co-feature, Alita Alvarez, Nicholson Poulard. Should be a very interesting you got the veteran Pollard and the upstart. Both guys are world ranked. Pollard, I believe, ranked sixth by the WBA. Yeah, Pollard in the top ten of the WBA, and Alvarez, you're getting a look at right here. Just 11 and 0, and already number nine in the WBO holds one of the WBO's regional titles, and number 15 in the WBC. As a result of that. Mentioned it before on this telecast. He was offered the spot to face Nathan Cleverly on short notice. He turned that offer of $50,000 down. Decided his time is going to come when, when he earns it and when he can get a full training camp and do it properly. Here's some of his action against Danny McIntosh. There's that. Knockout of the year candidate, a late one from Alita Alvarez. He has that great counter right hand that, when it's landed, has put away a lot of his opponents so far in his professional career. Here we take a look at Nicholson Poulard, an earlier fight in his career. He's hit rough patches, he has three losses, the most significant. Most would say against Sebastian Demers when he truly took a step up. Lost a 12 round decision. Hurt so, a couple times in that fight. Got a nice win over Lionel Thompson, a kid out of Buffalo. Thompson lost to uh, Sergey Kovalev, but then Thompson came back and stopped the New Jersey prospect, Chuck Masakio, about a month, six weeks ago. And that was a fight that a lot of people were impressed with Nicholson in. It was a tight fight where he had to stay mentally focused the whole time in that fight. And that at times has been the question for Nicholson. Can he put it all together when he gets in the ring in his big fights? We see uh, the Canadian broadcasters. This fight's being broadcast live all over Canada on pay-per-view. Daniel Melanson and Mike Bilodeau. How's my French? You, you did perfectly on those two. Mike Bilodeau, also our uh, unofficial ringside Nicholson scorer. Nicholson Poulard. And here comes Nicholson Poulard into the ring. A win tonight. And we can stop saying Nicholson Poulard, half brother of. Shut. That's John exactly Pascal. it. Pascal. Exactly. He said that jean has been getting these big paydays, he's been getting all the fame. I need a win here so I can get my big payday and get my shot at a world title. But again, you wonder what they see in this matchup because Poulard had a date with Andrew Fonfara tonight in Chicago. That fight fell through. They didn't necessarily have to take this fight. But Alvarez is a guy that they've sparred before. Dozens of rounds together. What did I, the Tiger management, and Poulard see in sparring or in this matchup in general that made them take it? The 28-year-old Elena Alvarez. For the past year and a half, if you ask anyone in the Canadian boxing scene, who's going to be your next world champion? Alita Alvarez has been the name that's come up most often. And again, how impressive is it that at just 11 and 0, he's at that position? But he's already 27 years of age. He's a decorated amateur. It's not quite the same situation, Mark, but in a lot of ways, it's like a guy like a, a Guillermo Rigondeaux where that hourglass is filling up quickly and they want to get him to the world level as fast as possible. And uh, like you said, he almost had that opportunity based on the 
him skyrocketing up the rankings. It should be sometime maybe before the end of 2013. Getting a lot of press, getting a lot of fanfare. There was great media coverage for this fight in Montreal all week. He actually headlined a card here in the Bell Center against Sean Hawk. Now he's already proving to be a good co-feature here. People turn out to see him fight. And this is certainly his biggest one yet. Well, let's go up the ring announcer, Chris Gauthier, to get the official particulars for our co-feature. Mesdames et messieurs, ce combat d'unification des championnats nord-américains est une co-présentation du groupe Yvon Michel. Mise au jeu et Vidéotron. Et se déroule avec l'approbation de la NABA et son superviseur délégué, George Martinez, de la NABO, et son superviseur délégué, Jerry Bowen, et avec l'accord de la Régie des alcools, des courses et des jeux du Québec, et son commissaire, Michel Hamelin. Le combat est également sous la surveillance médicale des docteurs Marc Gagné et Pierre Meunier. This North American Championship Unification Bout is a co-presentation of Groupe Yvon Michel, Mise au Jeu and Videotron is sanctioned by the North American Boxing Association, represented at ringside by Supervisor George Martinez from Toronto, and by the North American Boxing Organization, represented by Supervisor Jerry Bowen from Montreal. The bout is also approved by La Régie des Alcools, Les Courses et des Jeux du Québec, and its Commissioner Michel Amelin, and is under the medical supervision of Drs. Marc Gagné and Pierre Meunier. Les officiels pour ce combat, the officials for this bout. Chronometreur, timekeeper, André Huard. Chronometreur des chutes, knockdown timekeeper, Claude Lebel. Les juges, the three judges appointed at ringside to score this contest. Richard de Canufel, Jean Gauthier et Pasquale Procopio. L'arbitre du combat, Marlon B. Wright. When the bell rings, referee Marlon B. Wright will handle all the action. Du Centre Bell, en direct à Bell et Indigo, voici 12 rounds de boxe pour le championnat NABA et NABO des Milours. And now, for the thousands in attendance here at Bell Center in Montreal, and for all boxing fans tuning in live on Wealth TV, here is 12 rounds of action for the NABA and NABO Light Heavyweight Championship. D'abord, dans le coin 2, portant la culotte argent et jaune et pesant 174,6 livres. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver with yellow trim. He tipped the scale at 174.6 pounds. En 22 combats, il a 19 victoires, 9 par KO, with a record consisting of 19 victories, 9 coming by way of knockout in 22 professional bouts. L'aspirant numéro 7, WBA, champion, NABA des Milours, currently ranked seventh by the WBA. He is the actual NABA light heavyweight champion, De Laval, Nicholson, BC Poula. Son adversaire, dans le coin rouge, Porte la culotte rouge et or et pèse 173,8 livres. Across the ring, his opponent fights out of the red corner, wears red with gold trim. His official weight, 173.8 pounds. Une fiche parfaite, 11 victoires, 7 par KO en 11 combats. With a perfect professional record of 11 victories. 7 coming by way of knockout in 11 bouts. Aspirant numéro 15, WBC, numéro 9, WBO, l'actuel champion NABO des Milours. This man is ranked 15th by the WBC and 9th by the WBO. He is the current undefeated NABO light heavyweight champion de Montréal. Okay, gentlemen, I gave you both my instructions. Remember, protect yourself at all times and obey my command at all times. Good luck, touch gloves. 12 round co feature Nicholson Pollard, 35 years old in the white, 28 year old Elader Alvarez in the red. I'm Mark Abrams at ringside here at the Bell Center with Corey Urban. We're on Well TV. 
Some great action coming up on Well TV in the next week. We'll get into it during the fight. Some other great programming. And Alvarez. Uh, sticks out the jab. Mark, I think the angle here is that Poulard is one of the best fighters you will ever see in the gym. To the point where when you see him spar, you wonder how he's ever lost. But he hasn't been able to put it together in the big fights. Can he live up to all that hype, the playground hype that come out of the gym? Can he do that tonight here against Alvarez? Alvarez, I believe, you know, he's looking for, obviously he wants to win. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of light heavyweight action going around these parts of the world. We mentioned Boutte as uh, Alvarez tries to uh, land some punches on the ropes. Boutte, Pascal. Alvarez with impressive performance. He may get the old, hey, what about me syndrome? Nearly going, you see a bit of a, a feeling out process, and you see this a lot when guys who have sparred each other as often as these two have get in the ring for real. Not many secrets. And they both try to land left hooks at the same time. Jab from Alvarez. Well, it's no secret that. Poulard needs to stay off the ropes. He's had trouble at times, kind of being frozen by jabs, just putting his guard up and getting walked to the ropes. That's where he finds himself in trouble. Straight right from Alvarez. And a left from Poulard. I think if, if they were friends before that, I think that's out the window now. If you look at that focused look on Nicholson Poulard's face, he's like, nah. They haven't thrown a lot, but what they have thrown has been some hard stuff in the early going. Jab from Alvarez, follows up with the right hand. Quick uppercut and a right hand from Alvarez. Alvarez trying to open up in the corner. Last 10 seconds of round one. That little flurry might have given him the round here. Round one in the book, scheduled for 12 on Well TV. We said some great programming coming up on Well TV. This Thursday night, the rebroadcast of the Felix Sturm, Sam Solomon uh, fight. There was controversy during and uh, even after the fight. So that's this Thursday night, 10 p.m. Eastern. Then next uh, Saturday, Tony Bellew, Isaac Chalemba in a very highly anticipated light heavyweight bout. And even before that, tomorrow, the secret meat business on Well TV. Join Adrian on a journey into the world of all things meaty and delicious as he reveals the secrets of some of the most famous meat dishes, offering tricks and tips that make it easy for anyone to prepare and cook perfect cut of meat. Two episodes tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, The Italian, a staple in Italian cooking. Adrian shows us the versatility of cooking with rabbit, serving up his succulent, sweet braised rabbit ragu. You ever have rabbit? Well, you're, you're a vegetarian. I, I, I'm a vegan, no, but th this might teach me new ways to marinate tofu, I suppose. 1130's Dutch taking a leaf out of his mother-in-law's recipe. Adrian makes a great Dutch uh, recipe for delicious and descended glazed pork hock marcello. That's, that sounds good. Anything marcello is good. <laughs> As we start round two, scheduled for 12. Well, Alvarez looking good here in the the opening of round two once again. Both guys seem to have a lot of confidence. And again, you hear conflicting stories about who got the better of these sparring sessions. No, you always hear that. Oh, 
I don't think um, I don't think anyone's ever going to admit to uh, getting the best of having them getting the best of, especially when you're fighting a guy. Jab to the body from Alvarez. Poulard's having trouble reaching Alvarez in this round. It's just simple steps back. It's getting out of Poulard's range. He's not moving with him. Well, I think the speed of Alvarez may be the biggest problem for Poulard. The speed and the power of Alvarez are absolutely there. You can see that when he throws. The knock on Alvarez is that perhaps he needs to be a little bit more fluid. It'll kind of get his shots off one, two, three, four, and then reset. Good shot by Alvarez. People are growling at Alvarez as he ate that right hand. Jab from Alvarez short. Nicholson, a, a tremendous athlete who was on his way to a good amateur career, but had it cut short for pushing an official. He was banned from amateur competition and then basically had to turn pro and grow up in the ring. You see the action opening up. See a man in the purple shirt in the first round, the foreground, the former light heavyweight champion of the world, John Pascal. Very interested observer here ringside. Pollard misses with a wild left. Good right from Alvarez. End of round two scheduled for 12. Goulart not finding too many openings here. Right there was a microcosm of the first two rounds. Alvarez was able to kind of land a quick jab and was able to get out before Pilar was able to get his in. In history of boxing in press conference Tuesday at 12.30 here at Bell Center, open to the public. Tickets are on sale Thursday morning at Juventus.ca. Victor Vargoski also trained uh, UFC star George St. Pierre quite some time. I heard he's big around these parts. Well, that's the extent of my MMA knowledge. <laughs> Round three scheduled for 12. And later Alvarez in the red. That's right. Nicholson Pollard in the white. Pollard trying now to come forward with the right hand and left to the body. A little bit more aggressive here in round three. Vargoski told him in the corners, and you, you can't just wait for him to stop punching and then reply because he's getting out of the way. Jab from Pollard. Pollard now trying to jab with him a little bit. Quick body shot by Alvarez. kind of languishing on the ropes here. Reaching with the right hands, Pollard, and with the counter-punching and the speed with Alvarez, that could be extremely dangerous. Jab from Alvarez. Well, with that lack of fluidity at times for Alvarez comes good defensive responsibility as well. You know, he didn't go after Poulard when he was laying on the ropes because he felt maybe he was just trying to crank up a counter. Oh, 
Jab and a right hand from Alvarez. I think all the uh, we've sparred hundreds of rounds uh, respecting, that's all gone now. Good right over the top, and down goes Pollard on a vicious right hand! Pollard was but, stiffened by that right hand. I don't know if this one's going to continue. He, he doesn't have his legs about him. This fight's over. Nicholson Pollard disagrees, but when he got to his feet, he was on shaky legs. A later Alvarez. I just said the respect was out the window. That's flat out disrespect with a hard, hard right hand. Well, you certainly have to respect the power in that right hand of Alvarez. We were hyping it up in the highlight packs. That counter right hand. And unfortunately, throughout the round, Pugelard was giving him openings for opportunities to load something up. And Alvarez did just that, and he landed it right on Pugelard's chin. I don't know what it is about this building, but we see, we've see we seen some vicious shots over the you know, four or five uh, events that we've done here. And listen, this was a vicious knockout of a top 15 rated fighter as well. This exactly. isn't starching some guy that we flew in from Hungary to get knocked out. This was supposedly you know, a 50-50 matchup that they wanted to make so that one guy could be propelled forward, and he ended it emphatically. Here we go, right on the ropes. Jab and bang, right on the chin, and that was it. And Alvarez, Alvarez knew what happened. Oh. Couldn't place it any uh, better, could you, Corey? Uh, well, the lights were clearly turned out when you saw the arm extended and stiffened there as Poulard hit the canvas. Letting him continue probably would have been irresponsible on Marlon B. Wright's part. Well, let's go up to ring announcer Chris Gauthier in a minute. Get the official time. Definitely the best win of uh, young Alvarez's career. Well, he put a smile on Yvonne Michelle's face. <laughs> Let's go up the ring announcer, Chris Gauthier. Mesdames et Messieurs, l'arbitre Marlon B. Wright arrête le combat à 2 minutes 8 secondes du troisième round. Referee Marlon B. Wright stops this contest at 2 minutes 8 seconds of the third round. The winner by TKO, a new NABA. Sparring sessions, Mark, because he just did it for real. Well, the one that goes in the record book is that third round vicious knockout by Alvarez. <laughs> Team photo. Team Alvarez and Group Yvonne Michel. The heavyweight prospect Oscar Rivas in that bunch as well. The two of them came over from Colombia together. Alvarez obviously uh, much farther along. Did mention they picked up the NABA title as well in the process.
Great knockout for Elader Alvarez. I'm sure we'll get another look at it as Alvarez heads over to speak to our French colleagues. Safe to say that's been the highlight of the night. Once again, you're seeing our French colleagues speaking with Mark Ramsey and later Alvarez, who just scored a monstrous KO over Nicholson Poulard. Our main event coming up next between Darnell Boone and Adonis Stevenson. And the prospects for Alvarez now in the light heavyweight division, basically wide open. It's Chris Goche giving the, uh, the roll call, the other fighters in the crowd. Take a look back at some of the action from Alvarez and Poulard. And Alvarez, you can see early on, with the velocity of everything that he was throwing, he felt that he could hurt Poulard. He felt that way from the early going. And he certainly proved his point right there with that right hand. He certainly knew that one was over when that right hand landed. And it would have been horribly irresponsible for Marlon B. Wright to let that one continue. It's a good thing he did not. David Lemieux getting a shout out here at the Bell Center. Making his way into the ring. Joining Kevin Bezier, who of course had a big win over Nate Campbell. On February 8th. It's David Lemieux, you can see in the background. And here's a man once again in the background who has some real monstrous opportunities coming up on the horizon, Antonin Descari. There'll be an action on April 27th against Luis Carlos Abregu. Walked in on relatively short notice and stopped Alex Perez not too long ago to earn this shot. Jean Pascal! Now Jean Pascal makes his way to the ring. And you can already see the lines kind of being drawn here in Quebec, whether you're on Team Pascal or Team Boutte. You heard a few boos in the crowd there. Certainly a lot of Lucian Boutte 